News! My name is Mike B, aka Phony, sometimes. This is Uncle Chat. Thank you, Marius. Today is April 5th, I don't want to call right now, 2019. Thank you, Obsidian Storm. We've got a number of things to go through. Four pages of notes. Most of them we're probably not going to get to, but they're there in case, you know, it comes up and we need to like, talk about something within a certain topic we're talking about. But let's get started. Happy birthday, Kimmy's sister. Let's get started on... <laughs> first things first, let's see. Uh, April Fool's Day happened. Many uh, jokes were had. Pranks everywhere. Lighthearted fun. It was just a glorious day of just celebrating all of these game developers, all these crazy things. And so I went to Reddit to go and see, wow, I wonder what's happening over there. I want to kind of see like a nice little collection of jokes and shit. And what did I see? Reddit's closed. R slash games is closed. Wait, why? That's weird. What happened? Holy shit, something happened. Oh, it's April Fool's. Oh man, you almost got me. Okay. No, it does say not April Fool's, but it could still be April Fool's. Mm, could still be April Fool's. We'll see. Uh, it's, I'm reading through this thing. It is not April Fool's. It is not April Fool's. So they closed the subreddit down for one day. They started it at about like 10 o'clock the night before Pacific time. So around like it's like maybe midnight, middle of the U.S. time, right? Um, I saw it before I went to bed, but I thought I immediately thought it was April Fool's and I went to sleep. I didn't even bother reading this whole thing because I seriously was just like, ah, it's a good April Fool's joke. I'll wake up in the morning and be fine. Woke up in the morning and went to go check because I was looking for jokes. I was looking for jokes and I saw this and I was like, really, I was, I was like, whoa, it's still up. Let me actually read this thing. And so I, so I read through and I was really genuinely confused, genuinely confused. So this is a lot, this is a lot to read. So I'm going to summarize it. They closed down the subreddit because they wanted to bring attention to some of the negativity that they, they as moderators have to field on a regular basis. Um, and not necessarily because oh, we're moderators and we're tired of having to deal with all this stuff. We want you guys to see what it is because we're tired of dealing with it. Um, but because they wanted to raise awareness that this kind of thing, they say, is normalized. And I was like, whoa, okay, well, let's see what these are. It says, to the end, we want to show you, the community, what we mean by what we see. Blew this up a little bit. These are some of the more awful comments we see regarding transphobia. And you click it open. I was like, oh, shit, like, who the fuck says something about transphobia? And so I look... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, they're all gone! Are you kidding me? They were all there! Alright, wow. What the fuck? That's pretty funny. I guess they recompiled it into this right here. It's here. Uh, is this it? Hold on a second. Did they actually... Oh my god, they actually did. Oh, here we go, here we go. Okay, okay. So, sorry. I guess they removed a whole bunch of small ones and then... And then went with that. I, I would not put, I did not think that they would actually redact anything. Uh, so we do have a couple here that it's like, okay, cool. So we have examples of, of what it is that they were talking about. I don't know if these are exactly the ones that they actually had linked up here because they deleted all these conveniently, perhaps, question mark, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, but still, it still, it still shows that these types of comments that are reported and removed have like one one point, which is basically the first point you get when you actually create a comment. Uh, let's see, this one is deleted, one point. This one is negative eight points. Uh, this one is two points. Um, I'm sorry that I don't have the actual original one, so I can't really tell you if these are the exact same ones that they were there before, because I did not think that they would delete them, but there they are. So anyways, pretty much every single comment that was linked was like downvoted and reported. And I was like, but, that's the whole point of Reddit is that you downvote and you report things that don't belong in a community. And so by showing us all these things, these examples of transphobia, homophobia, Islamophobia, racism, misogyny, pro pedophilia, pro rape, and uh, personal attacks against other users by showing us all these things. And each one was a, uh, was a reported or a negative uh, downvoted comment. It made me, it, it made the community feel like we we're being punished because of, these people who didn't give a shit about the community to begin with. And we were, they were being punished even after they were doing their jobs of reporting and downloading these things. 
And so I, so I tweeted it out and I was like, what the flippity fuck is this? I think that's almost like verbatim what I opened with. Uh, and I was met, I was met with a little bit of, with, with, with some flack from some of my peers, uh, who disagree with, with my stance on, I was, I said, I was saying that this is not the right way to, to do this. Uh, and some people were like, yeah, but it was for a good cause. And it's just like, yeah, no shit. It's for a good cause because the bottom, it says give to some charities, this is LGBT plus, uh, charities, personal color focused charities, women's health charities, additional causes, all this stuff. These are all great causes. They really are. That's not the problem. The problem is up here, <laughs> up here where they say, look, we're shutting everything down because of these people who you've already reported and downvoted to hell to get them off the fucking site and show them that their opinions are not welcome here. We're going to go ahead and punish you anyways. That is what I thought was just not the right way to do that. And so the next day they opened up and it says the April, this is the April fool's, uh, uh post, uh, uh, that means they win. I know. I know. Exactly. It, just, it means that they win. It's, 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 it is so weird. Uh, and so afterwards, they, um, <laughs> he says, please do not guild this post. Instead, consider donating to a charity. Yes, please do that, actually. After the first one got like 100 freaking, uh, okay, well, platinums, gold, and silvers, whatever the fuck's half those are. Uh, <laughs> so anyways, the aftermath discussion thread opens up, and I pulled a couple quotes. because This is pretty lengthy as well. So I pulled a couple quotes and it says, honestly, this is them, right? The mod saying that honestly, most of us, if not all agreed with the sentiment, but not the method. That is, I think the most important part of this whole thing is that they agreed with the sentiment, but not the method. And so what, so that means that people are incapable of seeing past the sentiment of something for what it actually, for, for what the problem might actually be beyond that, right? Like, for example, the Patriot Act, right? Why would you ever vote against something with the word Patriot in it? <laughs> like, why would you ever do that? Universally agree, the Patriot Act was not something that we necessarily really wanted, uh, but because the acronym was Patriot, you would be uh, a Nazi or a communist or something if you didn't vote uh, for it. Uh, if you live overseas, Patriot Act might be something that's a little bit foreign to you, but just know that it was a surveillance type thing that we just didn't really feel like we needed and it happened after 9-11. And so they rushed it through with the acronym Patriot. Uh, and everybody was like, of course I support the Patriot Act because I'm a Patriot. And that was that. A little bit more comp like complicated than that, but let's the gist. Um, and so, again, it's the sentiment that's blinding people from the actual point being made on the other side. And this happens all the time on social media. Um, Further down, further down, they actually discuss, they say, uh, the question is, are we changing our moderation policies in response to our statement? And what is the moderation team doing to uh, going forward to address these issues? Because surely after closing it for an entire day, there's some kind of, there's some action items that we're going to take from this, right? There's some action items we're going to take from this. And it says, right now, we think our moderation policies and rule set catch the majority of the infractions we've been seeing. So why the fuck did you close it down? So basically nothing happens. Nothing happens. <laughs> That's it. Nothing. We, 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 we did this, but yeah, we want a day off, right? <laughs> Brexit was believe your country. Oh, right. Yeah, exactly. This, this kind of stuff, the sentiment is blinding to people. They can't see past the sentiment. They just can't. Uh, we'll argue that we can implement a system of downrating bad comments and it hides it from plain view unless you deliberately want to see it. Though most of the time when you downvote something, if it gets enough, it actually uh, goes into like a the comments are hidden or whatever because they're downvoted. Um, Reddit is typically pretty good about that in most of the subreddits. I think some, it's a subreddit option. Uh, so basically, yes, they did all this stuff and then they didn't actually, like we didn't actually make any changes after it. Didn't really make any changes after it. Uh, and so I, ch I, I was very quick to check this on the, the next morning because, you know, after, again, after some of my peers like vehemently disagreed with me on these things, I was wondering if I was wrong, <laughs> even though every part of my being said, no, I can see beyond the sentiment. I can see, I can see, I know that there's something over there that's not correct on the other side of this thing that we should hundred percent be supporting. Maybe every day and not just on a random day that you decide to close the subreddit. Um, but maybe there's something that I'm missing. And so I checked the next day and sure enough, sure enough, like majority of the top comments, probably 99% of them are like, wait a minute. Why did you do this? <laughs> like, I'll, I'll, let me just scroll. I'll just read the comment here. We'll scroll down. 
top comment upvoted because this is my account. Um, it says, mods, I understand where you're coming from with the call to attention. I really do. But quite frankly, the behavior you pointed out isn't accepted. If that album you posted was full of 20 plus upvote or God forbid, 100 plus upvote uh, post saying some shit that I'd agree with, uh, saying some sh that same shit, I'd agree that we need to take a real step back. That's kind of what I expected when I opened it. Instead, out of those 71 images, uh, only a single one that wasn't a lolly argument had any upvotes at all, and it was deleted in 14 minutes, having already acquired the controversial tag and a grand total of a single upvote. By compiling all of that shit, you actually brought infinitely more vitriol to the surface than I than I see here than I've seen here over the past uh, over the span of several months. And hell, that was what was actually uh, sorry. What was actually there was pretty normal hate speech I've seen thrown around for the past decade. Obviously not acceptable, but nothing worthy of calling a full lockdown and reflection. And so, so I going just going through and reading like every other comment. They're all collapsed because I was reading them all. So like making sure I was like, wait, am I dumb? And it's like, the question is, why do it at all? Next one says. Uh, uh, so nothing changes. This stunt is totally pointless. I find it hard to believe this is motivated by anything other than a need for attention. And it's just, it's just, it goes on and on and on. And so I feel, I, I felt a little vindicated. I hate to say I feel a little vindicated by Reddit of all places, right? But at least I, at least I recognize it. Okay, good. So I'm not, I'm not missing anything. I just didn't stop at the first speed bump. I went over it to look to see what was on the other side. Speed bump's kind of a bad term, but you see what I'm saying? It's just, it, it was just, there was just no reason to do this. Great that we got some attention to these things. There's a lot of days we could do that. You know, there's a lot of days we could do that for sure. Uh, that wouldn't bring any kind of ire like this, but <laughs> God damn. But then it gets, and then of course it gets into the cycle on Twitter where it's like, Oh, look at all these, look at all these incels who are uh, upset that their subreddit was closed or whatever. Ha. Reddit is a cesspool of shit and all this stuff. You know what's funny? I actually, uh, like any other, you know, warm-blooded human being, when I, um, when I first made my Reddit account, I unsubscribed from r slash gaming because r slash gaming is just garbage, right? Um, I subscribed to r slash games because I was like, okay, good. This is, this subreddit is not quite big enough to be on the radar of just shit posters who are just constantly fucking shit posting. Um, and yes, like Sam says, like, I like Reddit. You just have to curate your own feed. Yes, you have to curate. If you think that Reddit is a cesspool, it's because you are allowing that cesspool to exist like on your feed. Reddit is whatever you want to make of it. So, <laughs> so, so it's funny because this actually showed that r slash games is still, uh, sane because all, all of the removed comments and all, all of the reported comments, everything they showed that were shitty comments were all downvoted. And so it's like, great, <laughs> this subreddit's actually fine. Yeah, you're going to have people saying shit, but are you condemning Twitter? Are you, are you like, are you saying, are you saying, you know, I'm not going to use Twitter because of the, because of the, the egg, the egg avatars saying shit that I don't like, <laughs> like you, you can't just pick and choose who you're going to, you know, I guess outrage at, <laughs> um, Anything that relies on the argument of, but we can suggest you donate to these charities rather than validity of this argument is pretty shit. Well, in this case, I, in this case, again, I feel like people just couldn't see past the sentiment. That's like the whole, that's like my, my whole thing here is that people just can't, they're blinded by the sentiment. They can't see past it. Uh, and, and they use that. It's like, and, and they'll even say that even, even again, some of my peers, it even said, it's like, well, I mean, like, I agree with, I agree with what they're trying to do. Maybe it wasn't quite the, uh, it's a, I disagree with you, you being me. I disagree with you. I think that what they're doing is for a good cause but maybe it's not the best way to execute it. And I just felt like, well, that's kind of what I'm saying. <laughs> that's kind of what I'm saying though. Like that's, that's pretty much where I was at. It's like, yeah, are you, I'm not saying that these, that these, uh, that all these uh, um, charities and all these support groups are not worth our time and money. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that what's on the other side of that, this being, you know, hey, look at this, look at this terrible thing this person did that you guys all hated. Well, guess what? You're all in trouble for it now. Get the fuck out of here. The last time I had to deal with that shit was the military. When like one guy, when like one guy didn't wash his hair and he showed up to show up with like hey, oily hair or some shit like that. No, no, it wasn't a guy. It was a, it was a woman actually. She did not wash her hair uh, and would not take a, 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 a bath the way that, you know, but she wouldn't like bathe uh, regularly. And so, um, drill sergeant Jernigan actually went and pulled all the women out and she made them all do fucking push-ups until they were all super sweaty. 
and was like, there, now everybody go fucking shower. It was like three o'clock in the morning and the dudes were all up in the barracks. It was like, whoa, shit, they're getting fucked up out there. Uh, but that's the last time that we really had to deal with this kind of mass punishment thing. It's, it's just ridiculous. <sighs> I mean, personally, I'm sure there's other examples that have happened since then, but still, mass punishment for like the few, what the few people are doing. That happens all the time. Are you kidding me? What the fuck am I saying? Oh, man. So... Is that the night she got soap? No, she didn't get soap. But I mean, I heard, I did hear that something happened to her. Uh, but she just wouldn't shower for some reason. I think she was just nervous about like showering in front of other people because you know we had to shower in front of other people in the military. Um, so that's that's pretty much that's all I had to say about that. I just think that it was just silly, and I really wish that people could just, in general, in general, try to see past the sentiment. It's good that it's good that you look at something. You're like, oh man, that's a good cause. That's a great cause. But when it's attached to something else. Please try to look past it. It's the same way that that politicians attach shit to bills that don't belong at all. Oh, we need to build this bridge. We should we should totally build this bridge. Oh, also uh, in the back end of this, there's some money going towards the project that I'm working on over here to build a build a new swimming pool. And but you know what I'm saying? Like it's just it's it's just one of those things. It's like oh man, we'd love to have a bridge over this river and shit because like, we have to drive all the way around in our in our small town. We, it would actually benefit us greatly. It's like, but then you attach something to the back end of it. They bloat the bills with things. And that's exactly what's happening here. It's like they can't see past it. Oh, man. Man. All right. Next subject. We got to keep moving because we got some more stuff. Borderlands 3. Borderlands 3 has been announced officially. Uh, it is going to be a, uh, an epic exclusive for six months. Shocking no one. Um, <laughs> damn, Digi, dang. Uh, we talked about it last week. I brought up, I showed the, I showed the tweets, you know, going back to uh, uh, when, um, uh, was it, Pitchford was talking about how much he loves Epic. And I was like, and we were just like, mm-hmm, like, he loves Epic so much, it's probably gonna be exclusive. But I will say that six months, I'm not even mad. First off, I wasn't even planning on playing the game personally, right? I wasn't really planning on playing the game because I didn't really like Borderlands 2. I think Borderlands 2 is the one I played on like Xbox. Um, I didn't really like Borderlands 2. Uh, and so I wasn't really planning on playing Borderlands 3. So I'm not going to pretend that it's like, oh, they should do this thing and I'll buy their game. I'm not going to do that. Uh, but a six months, I'm just thinking about this from the perspective of those who are maybe waiting to play the game and maybe don't want to get Epic, you know, the Epic Games uh, store uh, and install it. Six months isn't bad. It's, it's, it's exactly what, I mean, I'll show you, I'll show, I got it right here. I got it right here. I'll read it verbatim. This one super smart guy says, exclusivity for six months. This is actually a win all the way around. Epic users get the game on day one. Steam users get the game after all the game breaking bugs and various launch controversies are patched out. Now I know this guy. He's typically pretty level-headed, smart, handsome. Good looking, smart, usually, usually knows what he's saying. I feel like, you know what? Modest. Yeah, like usually quite modest, actually. And I, I believe him. I think it's true. I think that we can probably just wait for the six months because typically, and I, I yeah, there's some snark that I laced in this or that this guy laced in it. Uh, there's some snark in there for sure, but it's actually true. Nice eyebrows. Hey. <laughs> It's actually true. A lot of times we get games that are just like, that, that feel like they're just been shoveled out. It's like, okay, this is close enough, get it out, go. Uh, and it happens all the time. It is 100% gonna happen with Borderlands 3. It might be a week or a month or two months until everything's ironed out. But you know what? That's like two months of just bullshit that you don't have to deal with because once it comes out six months later on Steam, you could pick it up and you'll have a solid game. You'll be, you'll be good to go. Uh, so. So that was my take on it again, was just like six months isn't bad, especially considering, especially considering uh, that it is an epic, it is an epic, or an epic game. Uh, it is an Unreal Engine game. Um, and we've already known that they've had a history together, you know, epic and, and, uh, uh, and well, Pitchford specifically, they've had a, uh, Randy, Randy, uh, they've had a, um, a history going back. So it's like, you know what? Six months is a bad. One year might be a little bit more upset about that on behalf of you guys. Again, I don't give a shit because I'm not going to play the game, but on behalf of you guys, I think it's right that I say something because it should be said. Um, unfortunately, 
Unfortunately, uh, it continues to fuel the arguments between Epic Games Store supporters and opposers. Now, notice I said EGS supporters and opposers because for some reason people think that if you support, if you don't support EGS, then that means that you're a Steam fanboy. Not completely untrue, but that's irrelevant. <laughs> Seriously, is irrelevant. Uh, but alas, we now have spreadsheets to break down every feature that one thing has that the other one does not, because we need these things now, I guess. Uh, you guys have probably seen this thing floating around, right? This is actually in the in that in the Twitter um, uh, uh, thread that I just showed you guys. But a lot of these things, I don't really care about, right? This is one of those things. Whenever you want to, whenever you want to uh, make something look bad. You list every possible small thing to make it look like the other side is worse. Every small thing. Like, for example, it's like, okay, like, uh, broadcasting. How many people really care about Steam broadcasting? Fucking no one. Big picture mode. Fucking no one. I mean, me, but fucking no one in the, in the, in the greater scheme of things, right? Uh, let's see. What, what, uh, marketing item trading. Uh, some of you guys are really into that, so I'll skip that one. Uh, offline play. No one cares about offline play, right? Who cares about that? No, actually, that's 100% needs to be on there. Jesus. Uh, let's see. Um, screenshot capture. Man. I'm sure you guys really miss screenshot capture. No, we don't care about those things. We don't care. But there are things on here that I do feel like, yeah, we, we do need to talk about why those things are on there or not on there. Why are there no achievements? Why is there no review system? Why is, it, why is there no shopping cart? You can't buy more than one game at one time. <laughs> why, man? It's just, it's, just, it's just not... And it's funny, at the bottom, look at the bottom. I can't really zoom in because it's a Twitter image, right? But it says, total positive features, 37. <laughs> to 6.5. It's because you put everything on there. Uh, Two-factor auth was added last year, I believe. Uh, but st you can argue that it was late, but still, it's there. So we we have to, um, yeah, it's it's been added. So we have to. So so, so we're going to talk about this in a second. But there's a lot of misinformation that goes around, and, and and it's really really important, especially when you if you ever get in any kind of uh, discussion with somebody about this. Like you really want to make sure that you're not. Um, you're not using an invalid point or a point that's been invalidated, you know, somewhere down the line. Cause I know it's really hard to keep up with these things because right now the Epic store is very bare bones. So of course you would think they don't have two factor auth authorization. That's what you would think. Even I thought that a week ago. All right. I thought that a week ago and I'm reading no, two weeks ago and I was going through reading all this shit because I, I wanted to learn more. I wanted to learn. I wanted to understand why, you know, again, you know, some of my peers, don't agree with me about why uh, uh, about uh, why Epic Games Store is totally fine. <laughs> it's like no, it's fucking not. Ah <laughs> oh, man, but but what I will say is there's a couple of things. One, it's not spyware. Um, let's go and actually. I, I have this thing set set aside here, but we're going to do this right now. Um, there's actually a thread that showed up on uh, it was this facepunch.com. Um, I don't know what facepunch.com is, but this article is pretty legit. This post, he actually goes through it in a lot of detail to point out that the Epic Game Store client is not. He says, let's start off with this. I think the Epic Game Store client is shit. It is slow. It lacks many, many features compared to its competitors and exclusivity deals do feel like a kick in the balls. However, there is a dispro disproportionate amount of claims being spread that Epic Games Store client is outright spyware. This is complete nonsense. And he goes through and he does a lot to show you that this is not, um, that it's that, you know, this is what they actually collect. This is what they actually do with the data. There's nothing here, right? There's nothing here to actually, uh, um, to justify calling it spyware any more than Steam or Facebook or anything else, right? Um, so good. Now it's funny because it references, it actually references the, uh, this specific Reddit post is literally what it says. Uh, this specific Reddit post where he actually goes through and it says, you guys probably saw this a couple weeks ago. I didn't cover this on, on news because it was, uh, it didn't seem quite believable enough, especially when he says somewhere in here, he says, I'm not really good at this stuff. <laughs> So this, this, I pretty much dismissed immediately. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to cover this because it's not substantiated. It's nothing. Um, and you know, in the same, but I guess you could say that this, uh, that the, uh, uh, this is not substantiated. So I guess, but, but, but to, 
Two unsubstantiated negatives, they cancel each other out, right? Well, I can't confirm that it's spyware, but I can't not confirm that it's spyware. That means we don't know. <laughs> so, yes, we could call it shitware if you want. Absolutely. You call it feature list whatever, a shell. Uh, you call all kinds of things. It's barren, whatever you want to call it. Absolutely. This whole EGS debacle is, uh, has made gamers look terrible. I see comments all the time of people still saying false information is factual. Even worse, even on Reddit, people are saying they will pirate EGS games receiving hundreds of up. But you know what, Severn? I, I agree. Uh, and that's why, that's why I want to, you know, I'm going to use my platform here to try to at least spread some actual information, you know, because, because, because it's here and I still see elsewhere that it is being, it's still being touted as like, oh, it's spyware or whatever. It's like, well, I mean, it's, it's probably not spyware guys. Um, and, and, you know, you're talking about like pirating. Yeah. Don't, don't pirate. Don't, don't pirate the game just because you don't like it. Just don't fucking, don't, don't buy it. Just don't buy it. You don't really need the story that that much. You know it's gonna suck. You guys know it's gonna suck, right? Borderlands Three is not gonna live up to expectations. It is not. Hundred percent not gonna live up. To, it's just not gonna happen. Um, but I'll be happy to be wrong because I would be so upset if the third installment on a game that I've been waiting to complete for the for my entire life, or uh, give or take a couple decades, turned out to be shit. I would be pretty upset about that Mass Effect Three. Uh, I would be a little bit. Uh, so I really hope for your sake that it actually, uh, is not shit, but just given the fact that most AAA games come out, don't live up to the hype because we build ourselves up to some unreasonable fucking standard. Everyone's going to be calling for jobs and all this shit and then get really upset whenever their jobs are actually lost because they get laid off. Oh man. <sighs> a billion guns and four of them. Be Wait, I saw a comment. It said they just shot themselves in the foot with a billion guns. I thought that was the greatest. It was so good. Uh, it checks where you are by using tricks of, uh, like check in at your restaurant. Wait, what? <laughs> I got an argument with someone the other day that said he pirates because he cannot stand video games these days. Yeah, he still pirates and plays. That's, that's stupid. Yeah, it's stupid. It's stupid. Don't support anybody that said that they're going to pirate a game for whatever reason. Uh, there's real people behind these things. Real people behind these games working their ass off. Sometimes, I mean, to the point to where they're taking stress leave, which we'll talk about in a little bit, Bioware. Uh, and it's, it's, it's. They just don't need the extra stress. They really don't. So don't promote that kind of behavior. I know you guys wouldn't do that because we're talking about it. You guys are saying you wouldn't do that. Um, oh, man. So we know they're not shit. We know, say, we know they're not. <laughs> we, we, think, we still think they're shit. Uh, but we know it's not spyware, okay? We all agree with that. We're all on the same page. Awesome. Um, how about Valve? Steam. Let's talk about Steam. Steam actually has a very interesting, uh, or this, sorry, this Ars Technical article took a very interesting approach to trying to figure out how much of Steam, how much Steam is actually getting um, from their sales. And it says, why Valve actually gets less than 30% of Steam game sales. This is a pretty lengthy article here that uh, goes into basically, and I'll summarize this a little bit. Uh, essentially, this guy wrote a script that uh, pulled data from the top 100, the, the 100 most popular games. And what they did was they took the reviews, they took the reviews, and if you look at your review section, you can see uh, that there's the verified purchases and then there's other, where they got the key from somewhere else and not a purchase, right? And so what they did was they wrote a script that actually went through and it split the data between uh, Steam purchases versus other. Uh, and 72% of the games that had 70% of the reviews on average of the top 100 games, the, the, they were purchased through steam, which means that there's 28% of them that were not purchased through steam. And it says here, remember also that valve incurs plenty of costs for these steam key sales beyond the mere bandwidth cost for game and update downloads. Key based sales can still access the same online lobbies, achievement and leaderboard systems, Steam Workshop inventory management, Steam server APIs, anti cheat services, and everything else that comes with being on Steam. Epic, on the other hand, provides very few of these service services in exchange for the 12% cut on its game store. This is a very good point to bring up because, again, kind of like the, oh, well, yeah, Epic Game Store is spyware kind of argument. It's like, well, the, the, the retort to that might be like, oh, well, at least I want to give people the money for the games. Well, at least we could look at this and say they're not getting the full 30 percent. They are. And this is this is this actually doesn't even actually the article is really good. I'll put it in the link below and all that. But the article is super good uh, or in the description below, I should say. Um, I'll just put it in chat right now for you guys. 
but it's really good at breaking down like it's uh 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 the uh where was I with this thought? Hold on. It's really good at uh breaking down the fuck. Oh, I guess I go sorry, the the unspoken costs to hosting games. Uh and also some of the work that they're doing for like uh uh, uh Linux based systems where they're actually I guess they're the ones that built uh what the fuck was the name of the app? They built they they essentially have made it so that it is possible to uh, to game on a non-Windows system, right? Pretty much because of Valve. They're not probably making a ton of money back on that investment, but they're doing it anyways. And so with that and everything else that they do, it's it's like, okay, well, maybe now it makes sense that they're doing that 30%. So how how in the long run, how is Epic going to continue to be uh, a, a, basically a self-sustainable um, off the 12%? Does that mean that Valve is uh, still making too much of a profit? Valve Proton API, thank you so much, Severn. Um, or does it mean that, um, that they're just going to constantly lose money on EGS, which they might do. They make enough money off of uh, Fortnite, and also everyone says Fortnite, but don't forget literal literally half the fucking games in the world are on the on the uh uh the epic engine so or the unreal engine so yeah it's probably it's probably probably pulling licenses fee, licensing fees from that which i think is like six percent or something so they're pulling money from all these things um yeah steam doesn't get a cut from hum humble but steam still provides those services while epic doesn't yeah now you can say that a lot of these things it all comes down and a lot of it comes down to you know look at the roadmap for epic game store eventually you know they're gonna get there and all that steam didn't have all these features and they were launched right it's like i love that argument because it's like well i steam kind of invented this whole thing like really they kind of did please tell me another like mass like massively distributed uh software hosting service because i know that someone's gonna say itunes and itunes isn't it <laughs> itunes ain't it it's ain't it chief right it's not itunes was a music distribution service Distributing software that requires updates is a much different, much, much different thing. Uh, LimeWire, you guys are funny. <laughs> Don't forget Xbox came out in 2003. Desura, rip! Desura came after, uh, after Steam. So, so really, like, if you look at it, it's like Valve had to really kind of go through and figure out what worked and what didn't work. And they still are. They still are. So, can we expect uh, Epic Games Store to have all this shit right at launch? No, no, but they should at least have some of the important stuff. Like they should, and let, instead of jumping the gun and trying to get in there and get all this and get all these uh, exclusives and everything, they should at least have some of the basic shit. Like you know, I mean, like like a check a checkout cart or something, achievements, reviews, those kinds of things. Um, what is this? Uh, uh, the worst argument with social media? Oh, sorry, with social aspects of Steam is that Discord has those uh, has a better cut than even Epic, and people actually use Discord unlike Steam social features. Um. Search by genre. Reviews are kind of a big thing. Yeah, reviews are a big thing. That's really important. Adobe Creative Cloud. I met before. That's what I'm saying. Steam was first. Uh, I mean, there probably was. There might have been something, but I honestly don't think that there's anything. Like, if you if you name something that came out before 2003, that was basically a software distribution platform that constantly kept things updated and and did all those things that Steam did at launch, uh, then. You know, I would argue that it probably wasn't that particularly popular. <laughs> like, it probably just wasn't. It probably didn't have the scale that Steam uh, was going through. Windows Update. Fuck, you got me. <laughs> that, I mean, that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good um, uh, uh, thing. Yeah, there was. You know, it's funny. You talk about Download.com. There were a couple services that were around, like GameSpy. Yeah, that came out pretty early. They basically were trying to manage your uh, your updates and all that, but I would still argue that they were not on the scale uh, that uh, that Valve was trying to do. And I don't have the numbers really back that up, so, well, you know, but yeah, wow, I remember, I used to actually use the Game Spy, like, little launcher that ran in the corner of the window, yeah. Um, oh, rip, Saren. Um, so, with all that in mind, there's more. Hold on. Um, because we did mention that you know, there's the whole issue with exclusives and all that. And you would think, you know, a lot of it was like kind of speculation where like, you're like, oh man, we know that they're throwing money at these people and there's, yeah, it's, it's, it's fucked up. We don't like the way they're doing that, which, you know, you could argue that it's 
capitalism, which, you know, it's, it's, it's not illegal. Like for some reason, people are saying that it's illegal that they're, they're buying their way into the market. Uh, that's not entirely true. Um, paying for exclusives, actually, hold on, let me pull this over real quick. Paying for exclusives is, I mean, it's basically a form of, it's part of capitalism. It's part, it's part of being a business. It's part of competition. That's what I should say. It's part, it's part of competition where you, you are doing what you can in order to, uh, uh in order to be competitive in a market. Um, they, but the problem is, the problem is that they can't stop buying exclusives before they feature match or at least feature compete with Steam or everyone will just go back to using Steam. Uh, development takes time. They're building a launcher. You got this, uh, what is it, the Epic Trello board you just, you just linked right here, Cliff? Let me go and pull this up here. Uh, it's Trello. I guess I think it's safe to pull up on stream. Um, so they have a Trello board, which is great. They have all these things on there. But all these things take time. It's gonna take time to implement these things. And the only reason why people are using the Epic Game Store launcher right now is because it has games that they are playing right now. But their libraries, by and large, their library is still on Steam. So the second that Epic stops buying these, uh, these exclusives or offering, I should say, offering uh, deals for these exclusives, um, that's when people will just leave. And you know what? They'll only go back and use it when they want to play that game again. Case in point, Origin. Unless you're playing a game actively on Origin, you don't really have it running all the time. At least I don't. And I'm pretty sure that's probably a lot of people that don't necessarily go back there and just play, a, you know, a ton of games on there. Because we still have most of our libraries on Steam. So if this is the way that Epic wants to play the game, I guess, where they're going to, you know, offer these deals to publishers and, and developers to get them to use their platform, they can't stop doing it until they have matched Steam or at least come close enough that people are like, oh, you know, this is a pretty good alternative. Like, for example, Origin Now versus Origin at launch. Huge difference. Monster difference. In it like just it's they've come so far um but still it's not the home base launcher for gamers for a lot not even a small percentage i would i would argue um let's see i don't agree with the exclusive stores either but really epic makes offers to devs uh, uh pubs oh god oh god i'm losing your, your comment here uh uh, uh publishers da, 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 and they still have to accept why why hate epic for making an offer epic also has legit money for uh, legit has enough money to buy entire studios to publish EGS exclusive games, but they aren't doing that, say, for Fortnite. Well, they wouldn't do that. That would be, that would just be a complete waste of money for them to buy studios because studios don't last. Like, they, they pump out one or two good games and they disappear. So that's not a, that's not a money smart thing to do for them. Um, there's nothing stopping Steam from doing the same as Epic. Uh, thing is, currently Steam doesn't need to because they don't, uh, need to build their store like Epic needs to. Yeah, exactly. For what I recall, Epic said that they are not planning to keep, uh, they're not planning to keep going on buying exclusives. It was then clarified that they are not going to be going out and offering these exclusive deals to companies, but companies can approach them. Yes. Yes. Let's go ahead and see where that comment originated from. Uh, so this gentleman here writes to Tim Sweeney. The, this, this is the basically the, the guy at uh, Epic. Yeah, hopefully you guys know who he is. Uh, it says, care to explain what's going on with the observation of what, uh, with observation of what is being said here. The game was already set for Steam. This is going back to Metro Exodus, right? Uh, and he says, we've had a lot of discussions about this since GDC. Epic is open to continuing to sign, uh, sign funding slash exclusivity deals with willing developers and publishers regardless, regardless of their previous plans or announcement around Steam. And then he says, so basically what you said at GDC was a lie. He said at GDC, Steve Allison, who is the EGS head, uh, said, we don't want to do that ever again. When asked about the Metro Exodus controversy, see here. And he has it here. And then he follows up. He says, this prompted further discussions at Epic, leading to the real realization that these calls must be up to the developers and publishers. And Epic wouldn't tell them no on account of existing statements made about Steam. So he's saying, he's basically saying, listen, we don't give a fuck about Steam. Because we're just here, we, you know, we're just going to leave the money on the table. And if a developer comes over, we don't care that they had deals with Steam or no one has deals with Steam, that they, that they plan on launching on Steam. We don't care about that stuff. If they want to take our money, we think they have a good product that we're going to put them up. We're going to put them up on the uh, on the EGS. So he's he's not going to say, you know, fuck Steam or anything like that. He's just saying, you know, the money's on the table. 
and we'll take you. We don't care that if you're going to go on Steam or whatever. We don't care. And I feel like in saying that, he is by extension also saying we don't care about the consumers on that on the other side of that as well. Um, it's competition has to be for competition to be healthy. It has to be in this in, in this industry. It has to be good for both the consumers and the developers. Have to be, it has to be good for both. Right now, EGS is really only good for developers, and even then. It's probably not. And I say probably not because we really don't know, like Hades, for example, what a great game. What a really fun and just action-packed game. I fucking love that game. But how, how well would it have done if it was on Steam? We don't know what the numbers are for sales. I don't, I don't think anyways. We might, I'm sure. But, uh, but I don't think we know. Uh, Hodars? <laughs> we, don't, we don't know what the numbers were um, on Epic. We know that it did well, but we don't know how much money they made. And we'll, we'll never know what it, what it could have made on Steam. And so because of, you know, Epic Game Store's discovery, which is basically non-existent, I haven't checked it in a while, but the last I checked, it was literally just like giant pictures and you scroll down through the pictures and that's how you get through the games thing. I guess you could search by genre or whatever, but that's pretty much all you get. Um it's it's not so the discovery is not really there so they can't really uh support games on the scale of steam anyways and it's funny because some of the arguments against steam is like oh it's a bunch of shit games it's like then just fucking filter the games or don't buy them who cares if there's a bunch of shit games on there like just don't buy them i don't like half the games on steam 90 percent of the games i don't like on steam especially anything in that was it the visual novel thing where it's all like just hentai basically it's just basically a hentai pretty much um but I mean, here we have Tim Sweeney essentially saying, yeah, like we're going to, we're, we're going to, we're going to, we are going to continue offering, uh, money. Uh, let's see. There was, I don't think there's anything else in this particular conversation, but, um, as you can see, so oh, yes, we're paying developers money in exchange for exclusive and free game releases. We've been saying this all along. So, so he's saying, yeah, we've been doing it. We have been doing it. And it's again, you know, them paying for exclusives. I, it, it's annoying. It's really annoying. Uh, because I like to have all my games in one spot, but at the same time, I understand they want to compete. But if you want to compete, please make a product that, uh, that can compete without these games. Cause like I said, they're, they are spending money. They're just spending money on, uh, or they're spending a substantial amount of money on some of these games. And they really should be at the same time, hopefully really doubling down on getting, uh, these features into the Epic game store. Cause you know what? In a year, hopefully in no more than a year, I hope to, on this show, maybe, look back and be like, oh man, we were so mad at EGS, but they actually pulled it off. Like they actually pulled it off and they made a really great platform and it has all these awesome features that we love. That's what I would like to see. But right now, they're not there. They're just not there. Ugh. People cry about Steam not filtering themselves, but shun Epic for catering exactly to the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Let's see, man. Kotaku and Bioware, they had a fun, fun past week. You guys are paying attention to that at all? What is this? HBO is a good analogy. Game of Thrones is exclusive to watch there and people subscribe just for the season and then cancel. Yeah. Oh, go to watch <laughs> Jesse Cox anti videos. I saw that on Vimeo, actually. It's pretty funny. Um, Sad things this happens in every industry. Selling inferior product uh, by choking out the competition. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's it's true. It's true. Woof, man. <sighs> EGS is early access right now. It's, it's it really needs work. And and, and listen, I, I I'm happy where Origin is now. I didn't like it when Origin was released. I don't think anybody liked Origin when it was released. Um, and I'm hoping that, you know, in a year's time, hopefully yet less, it'd be amazing if they just bust it all out. It'd be a great story. It'd be like, whoa, holy shit, these guys actually stepped up and they built all this stuff uh, in response to, you know, game, gamers' feedback. Um, I hope we look back and just say, wow, man, they really made some, some, some pretty crazy changes and they did a good job pulling all that stuff off. But, I mean, <laughs> they have to do it quick because they're still spending money to try to just keep people on the platform. All right. 
Yeah, Jesse Cox. Yeah, you know, he tried to put it on Pornhub, but I guess he said there's some uh, um, there's some issues with how it uh, encrypts or something like that. I don't know what I don't know how Jesse Cox has issues with with that shit encrypting. I've seen so much porn from like just amateurs, like this dude took a picture of his girlfriend's long and they like, posted it. And I was like, man, encryption's fine on there. I don't know what happened. Like, I, I don't know anything about uploading Pornhub though. All right, let's see. So, Bioware and Anthem they had a week. There is an article that popped up. Uh, earlier this week on Kotaku and it said how Bioware's Anthem went wrong and this article is I uh, watch should I leave that picture up just leave this let's do this let's scroll this up a little bit do 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 there we go um so this article is is fairly length 14,000 words I believe um and it is it it made a lot of really good really good points this is so first off this is Jason Schreier I understand not everybody agrees with Jason Schreier but on, in the in the subject of Kotaku, Jason Schreier is the one guy that I'll read articles from because I do feel like he he does a like, really good actual journalistic work. And maybe I don't agree with his summaries or maybe his conclusions sometimes, but at least I know that he is getting the information right. Like he's I don't I don't not believe him basically when he says he interviewed nineteen people that will remain anonymous. I believe him, especially when uh. Somebody sends, I was, when like a company head sends an internal email out and five minutes later it shows up on Jason Schreier's desk. Like clearly he has connections. <laughs> clearly he does. Fuck your retinas. Chat. Who's that, Ira? No, it's not. It was Buffy. Oh, Buffy. Okay. I'm trying to be nice. Sorry, Buffy. But just maybe you just put some sunglasses on. Uh, let's see. So uh, they actually, they, they published an article discussing the um, <laughs> Ira. Ira Week is the first one. He's like the first one. <laughs> Every time something goes wrong, where's Ira? <laughs> where's that? Don't worry, I, I was there too. When I was a kid, I used to go travel with my with my grandparents and my uncles and everything all the time. We'd get an RV and we'd go, right? It's like eight of us in an RV. Eight of us, no, 10 of us in an RV, okay? And we're pulling out of the lot. We're going to, uh, uh, we're going to uh, Mount Rushmore. We pull out of the lot. We're in California, right? We pull out of the lot and uh, my uncle had backed, I guess he like scraped the entire side of a Cadillac or something like that with the RV. So he's like, eh. All the way back, and the first thing he does, he turns around, he says, "Mikey, what are you doing?" And that's exactly what I do to Ira. So don't worry, Ira, I was there. I'm not picking on you. I was there. You did earn this, though. You did earn it. But anyway, so uh, Jason Schreier interviewed 19 people, anonymous employees, or people that connected with uh, with the development of Anthem, and uh, he discussed. Basically, they discussed your know, Bioware magic, uh, which is what they call it internally. And it's basically another word for crunch time, right? It's just, it's another name for crunch time. What did I do, Mike? You licked my nuts, dude. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. So Bioware magic equals crunch time. We know that Bioware has put out some really good stuff in the past. We know they did. We know. Nobody's going to say that they haven't put out some amazing titles that have changed our lives a bit. Um, but they're, they're making, they're making mistakes, man. They're making mistakes. Uh, here's a quote. It says, it's a story of a video game that was in development in nearly, uh, for nearly seven years, but didn't enter production until the final 18 months. Thanks to big narrative reboots, major design overhauls, and a leadership team said to be unable to provide consistent vision and unwilling to listen to feedback. And some of the examples he gives, one of the examples at the top of my head that he gives is, uh, in meetings, for example, when they discuss, you know, a major plot point of, of, or major feature or function of something in Anthem, they never really came to a conclusion of what that was going to be. They never actually, when they left that meeting, they didn't really have an answer as to what it was going to be. And so it basically just turned into this constant game of just, well, uh, we don't know how they're going to be flying around. Like, what's the, what's the method of how they fly around? Or what's, how's the gunplay going to feel? We never really, really, like, uh, we, we kind of went back and forth, thought it, but we really couldn't agree on anything. And I don't know why they couldn't agree on these things, but it doesn't matter because it actually ended up, because it, it ended up contributing to to the Bioware magic, <laughs> the crunch time at the end. Um, the name itself was changed from, previously it was Beyond, uh, it was changed from Beyond to Anthem because they said, uh, I guess because the EA execs or somebody said that they could not uh, reliably secure the name across everything, right? I guess they couldn't necessarily reliably uh, get, all the, get the name, uh, so they went with Anthem instead. They made this change days, like three or four days before the announcement at E3 2017. Uh, 
Hey, it says BL Tank says, Studio Game Dev in a nutshell, higher ups always argue and can never get on the same page. That's true. And what I'll say is that Brian and a couple other of you guys uh, have spent a lot of time in actual game dev. Uh, and so it is true. It is definitely, and you know what? It happens everywhere too. I mean, even at Zam, like there was shit that we were trying to build and we couldn't like, but we, we used, we used to have somebody who would just say, nah, we're doing like this. Fuck you. Like, and I really appreciated that. <laughs> I really appreciated that for a while. Maybe I didn't agree with everything that person said, but you know what? At least something was getting done. At least we walked out of that meeting with like, all right, well, I guess we're going to do this thing. <laughs> and that was pretty much it. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it, it's, it's, it's something that happens in every industry. I mean, I'm sure some of you guys work for, uh, you know, some other, other types of software developers, uh, or you work in, um, Maybe you work in retail or something like that. So you know what it's like in retail uh, when, when you have your sales manager and your store manager that don't fucking, they don't agree on how an end cap is supposed to look. Oh, well, it's an ad. It's an ad by end cap. We have to actually set this up a quarter. Like we're going to set it up right here. It's like, oh, well, I don't really want it right there because it ruins this or whatever. It's like, it's the same thing. It happens everywhere. Uh, and so, uh, and so here's another thing. This is kind of funny. This actually comes from uh, the, uh, the higher ups, I guess, uh, at, uh, at Bioware. It says, one mandate from Anthem's directors uh, had been to make the game unmemeable. It's a very hard word to read when you look at it. Unmemeable a rea a, as a reaction to Mass Effect Andromeda's jittery facial animations, which became an internet joke in the days leading up to the game's release. You guys remember all this. Uh, and so they probably, uh, probably uh, one of the comments on Reddit was like, like these, these, these execs are so shook because they're, they're, 13 year old was making fun of their game right and so they're like oh man we can't we got to make sure our game is unmemeable <laughs> chat needs memes no. <laughs> chat listen you got we got to talk about what you guys don't know what memes are we got to talk for a second um uh why memes are why memes are what gives games longevity that's true that's true the fucking arrow to the knee like People know what that is, and I would argue that because of that, it raised awareness. It's like, oh, what does this meme come from? What the hell? Our thing to the knee. And people went and looked it up. And I'm sure someone was like, oh shit, I didn't know there was another Elder Scrolls. I'm gonna buy this game. And they did. And so it's just like like memes, memes are, in my opinion, a valuable a promotional tool. If your game is getting memed on, even if it's negative, right, you're probably still making more sales than if nobody was talking about it at all. Raise awareness to knee injury injuries around the world. Exactly, exactly. Uh, maybe that game had some sort of story or character development. Where, uh, nobody would have cared about the faces. Oh man, yeah, yeah. Well, one of these years, I'm gonna go actually go and actually play it. So I'll let you know how it goes. So here's the thing. There's more. Wait, there's more. I'm not done. So Bioware responds. Okay, I'm gonna pull this over here. This is pretty funny. All right, Bioware responds, and they they go through this whole thing. I got an excerpt here. It says. So first off, it says, we'd like to take a moment to address the article published this morning about Bioware Anthem's, uh, Anthem and Anthem's development. First and foremost, we wholeheartedly stand behind every current and former member of our team that worked on the game, including leadership. It takes mass amount of effort, energy, and dedication to make any game, and making Anthem would not have been possible without every single one of their efforts. We chose not to comment and participate in the story because we felt there was an unfair focus on the specific team members and leaders who did their absolute best to bring this totally new idea to fans. Totally new idea. We didn't want to be part of something that was attempting to bring them down as individuals. We respect them all and we build uh, and we built this game as a team. So he says, we don't see the value in tearing down one another or one another's work. We don't believe articles that do uh, are making our industry and craft any better garris body pillow what the fuck thanks for the for random body image what what is this <laughs> uh, uncle chats is going off on a tangent now uh so they put this out and what was really interesting is jason schreier tweets out he's like i feel like they the more i read this the more i feel like they didn't even really actually read the um oh my god it's right there <laughs> There is a Garrus body pillow. What the fuck? It's right there. Listen, I'm trying to do the news, all right? I'm trying to do the news. Don't stop focusing on this over here, all right? We got to do work. Damn, that's pretty funny. <laughs> you know what I could do? I, here's what I could do. Watch this, watch this. You guys are going to love, hate this. There you go. Let me see. Uh, uh, blur. Here we go. Mm -hmm. There we go. Bam. All right. Now let's talk. Let's keep talking. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, so Bio BioWare responds. Jason Schreier is like, wow, man, I feel like they didn't even read the article. And then Polygon posts a follow-up. Now, I want to go back real quick. Hold on a second. So the article is actually, it actually just discusses not so much, it's not really beating them up. It's saying that, uh, that there's, there's people that are genuinely being hurt by, uh, uh, you buy the decisions that are being made. Like they're, 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 they're fucking stressing out. They're taking stress leave. They're having anxiety attacks. They're being worked to the bone. Like, and, and that's what the article is shining light on. It's like, there's gotta, something's gotta change. There's a problem here. Something's gotta change. It, it wasn't an attack. It wasn't an attack at all. Right. It, you No. So then I can't believe I'm defending Kotaku. Uh, then on this side, Polygon comes out. And it says, the press is not your enemy, Bioware. And it goes through this whole process where it basically says, talks about all this stuff. Now, all of this shit, right? They basically, they, they do a breakdown of the, of the article versus, uh, of the uh, uh, Kotaku article versus the Bioware response. But then at the bottom, the most interesting part at the bottom, do, 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 do. It says, correction. The story originally stated, Bioware responded before the report was published. A publicist from Bioware reached out to say its statement was published 15 minutes after Kotaku's report went live. It's worth noting, however, that Kotaku's report clocked in at a hefty 11,000 words, which, at an average reading speed, will take well over an hour to read. Bioware's statement was not an insignificant, uh, so not insignificant, 400 words, words, which even a proficient writer and publicist would struggle to complete and edit in just 15 minutes. Kotaku's, art, Kotaku's Jason Schreier noted in an update to his piece that EA did not have a chance to read the article before publishing their post. And had only been a bullet, and had only seen a bullet-pointed summary of what was in the piece. And so, basically, Bioware had this knee-jerk reaction, where they it's it's like it's it's like when your dad would pull out the belt and he'd go to like hit you with it, right? You'd go to spank your butt, and you would have that ah like a reaction like ahead of time. You kind of like react before the yeah yeah. That's that's pretty much what Bioware did. They thought they were going to get spanked and they reacted They're like, no, no, God, no, no. And started crying. And then it was like, oh shit. No, it's not the case at all. <sighs> I didn't do it. I know. And you still get beat. It's okay. Um, and so a couple days later, or maybe a day later, Bioware boss addresses studio issues, vows to continue working to solve them. And so... Casey sent an email out to everybody and the email of course showed up on, uh, no, no, I was totally kidding. By the way, like I said, I've talked about it before. My dad spanked me. My mom spanked me. It wasn't that big of a deal. It happened like a handful of times, maybe like 10 times, most 10 times. Uh, I'm totally fine, but my asshole brothers, boy. Okay. So anyway, so, uh, Casey, uh, Casey Hudson sent an email to everybody. And of course it immediately gets forwarded over to, it's almost as if, it's almost as if Jason Schreier is on the mailing list somehow. Um, and in that, in it, he says, Casey says, I'm committed to getting us to a place where we are delivering on the highest expectations for Bioware games through a work environment that's among the very best in the world. With your help, we will get there. And so Casey is now a CC to Jason Schreier. Yeah, exactly. So Casey is acknowledging now after the, after they'd already said, after that, that initial thing came out. And said that um, you know we don't we don't believe these kinds of articles are really helping us. <sighs> you guys <laughs> are really helping the industry. It's like, mm, but maybe we do have some things we could work on. And so they're gonna they're gonna have an all hands meeting next week, uh, this coming week here, where they're going to, um, you know, I guess discuss these things. Freycor, he says we are committed to a healthy environment after the game already launched, so we can go slower anyways, right? Yeah. Oh man. So I don't know what. I don't know what to expect from any of this, uh, except that it's been just a turbulent week for Bioware where they, they had a reactionary response to something they didn't even read. And, and it wouldn't be so bad if they didn't, if they didn't go on the, on the, on the attack, or I guess the attack defense where they said, uh, that, uh, where is the thing here? We don't see the value in tearing down one another or one another's work. We don't, believe articles that do that are making our industry and craft any better. So that, that just showed that they didn't really read the article they, or they didn't read it correctly. Maybe, um, this is, a, this is AMC. Oh God, what are we on? Kotaku? Oh, Kotaku. Okay. Yeah. Um, so 
hopefully every hopefully everybody involved in this is getting a good weekend of, of rest and maybe next week we could tackle it again uh i don't know if this is gonna necessarily extend any kind of um uh changes to the way that bioware does anything but we should also not forget that this is not a bioware exclusive deal this is every every development everything that, when it comes to development you always have crunch time we did it at sam uh you always have some kind of crunch time and i don't know if that's ever gonna change i don't know if that's ever gonna change we could continue calling it out it's like people basically get get worked up i mean, sorry get worked to death before the launch of a product and then get laid off after it's out like until until there's some kind of union in place it's just not gonna change man it's really not there's Right now, Bioware is under the microscope, but Jason Schreier alone has articles on tons of uh, of, of of different um, uh, game developed companies and, and 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 tertiary companies that do the same thing. And so it's just it's just it's something that if 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 I mean if they want to protect themselves, they're gonna have to unionize. Uh, and we talked about uni unionizing uh, unionization last week, I think. So my thoughts on that are last week's. Uh, and they change every day. No. <laughs> so, so I guess we'll have to just wait and see what, I mean, you know, what, what they, what, what they want to do to change or whatever. But re realistically, I don't think anything's going to happen. Like, I think it's going to go back. I mean, they're, they're in the down season. The game's launched. They're just going to make content for it now. Uh, and then they're going to move on to the next title or whatever it is. And actually, uh, Vertney says, uh, there's an EA Star Wars game being shown April 13th. Who's working on that? Which which studio? I'm guessing it's a Bioware studio, but is it uh, Edmund or I wonder who's working on that? Uh, I know that they had something, and then they and then they pulled it for some reason. What was it? The Star Wars had like a number or something after it, but um, but anyway, so Bioware right now is not looking good. Bioware has had two not great games after having like five great games. So it's they're in a they're in a really tough position. You're funny for Romeo. Uh, they're in a really tough position right now, where they they need to figure out what the next thing is going to be that they're going to. I don't know, create and whatever. But they have lots of time. Um, respawn your team after Visceral was killed. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I remember that Bio well Bioware had the license a long time ago. That's right, that was a long time ago for the uh, Sotor and all that. Sotor and Kotor and all that. Uh, yeah, man, man. Bioware had so many good things going. What happened? It's so upsetting. Star Wars. Ah! All right. Oh, man. It's just more bad news. Just so much, just so much bad news. So much bad news. This one sucks. This one kind of, I mean, not close to home, but close enough. So, um... Z1 Battle Royale. If you're not familiar with what that is, uh, that is H1Z1. You guys may remember the Hizzy. Remember Hizzy? Uh, they have gone through a number of very odd changes and splits and all kinds of things. And all of it has now uh, led up to the fact that they are, um, well, the people that are working on Battle Royale, that uh, they have been laid off. We don't know how many uh, have been laid off, but we do know that in December, there were 70 people that were laid off then. And so now I don't know how many people are left after this. They are going to, uh, Nat G actually did post a response um, where they are going to, let me see. Well, first off, Adam Clegg, he's a friend of mine, uh, Ark Legger, he's the lead designer for, um, uh, on, uh, uh, on H1Z1, or sorry, Z Z1 Battle Royale. Uh, he has this, he has a pretty lengthy twit longer here. That's 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 worth the read. It's a, a lot of it is it is like thank yous. It's a lot of things. It's it's, it's very much a an Oscar speech, but it's, some of this stuff is is pretty much worth noting here. And I want to read some of this because it's pretty important. So it says, uh, "Let's be real. The game, no matter what, will always be known as H1. Uh, this is something we said many times through all the name changes, and it's what I will refer to it as here on out." I would first like to take the time to apologize to the survival community. I personally feel like I took a hard left turn somewhere in 2015 when I saw the Battle Royale mode start to pick up and I left for greener pastures. I had a lot of fun creating and helping make that survival world. We all had fun playing the true, I'm sorry, uh, we and helping make that survival world. We all had fun playing the true H1Z1 and I wish I had put more time into it. But being in the moment and seeing what was going on with BR mode and, and now it's now a huge genre, it was too hard to not want to be a part of it. 
I hope you accept my apology as a dev. Now, in terms of what happened to the game after 2015, I had no control over all that stuff. Okay, so, so, I mean, he was like, he was like a lot of us, right? Where it was just like, all, all, all of this, all of this shit is like taken off and like battle royales are everywhere and just like fuck a zombie game. Let's make a battle royale. And they split. Remember that? They split between just survive and, uh, and, um, uh, the battle royale. And since then, it just, it just had a very turbulent, just everything. Uh, no, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's Dean Hall. <laughs> Don't confuse Ark Lager with these. Come on. Um, and everybody went for it. But that's the problem is that everybody went for it. And so now there's like a bazillion battle royales. They're everywhere. A fucking car battle royale was released this morning. This morning. Okay. So yeah, it's just, it's just happening. It's, it's still, it's still happening. Who knows what's going to happen with that car battle royale. Was that not my car game? I think is what it's called. It hashtag not my car. I have no idea. Um, but yeah, it's, it's supposed to be like Twisted Metal Battle Royale, but I haven't actually seen the, uh, seen anybody play it yet, but there's a couple people playing it right now on stream. Uh, but stay here for a little bit longer. We're almost done. All right. So, uh, so yes, a lot of people were let go. It's super unfortunate. They're going to take the title. They actually responded uh, over here on the Steam forums, they're actually going to take the title and they're going to um, give it back to Daybreak, right? Is that right? Uh, hold on a second. Because, and I'll, I'll be totally honest with you guys, okay? They have gone through so many weird splits and transfers and all of this stuff that I actually don't know who specifically owns what chunk of the H1Z1 brand. I just don't. Um, <laughs> because, because again... Uh, because also I don't really play it, right? So I don't really keep up on the news until, until my buddy gets laid off and it's like, holy shit. Uh, so he says, we have also decided to hand back the Z1BR torch to Daybreak Games so that both Z1BR and Hizzy will be under one publishing umbrella once again. It should have never split. Uh, and honestly, honestly, they should probably just ditch the... Uh, Battle Royale altogether because the Battle Royale does not have a future. Z1BR, I don't believe, has a future right now. There is, there's just no opportunities for a game that does not fill a void uh, when there's other games in the same. Like, for example, I mean, like, Z1 is too much like um, PUBG. And it's not enough like PUBG at the same time. Um, and we have Apex that's like taken off too. It's just, it's just not different enough. It's just not different enough. The car mode BR, right? That was kind of interesting. I thought that would pull me back into it, but it didn't. So yeah, it's just, so now it's going to go under one, one umbrella. I'm hoping that they just say, you know what? Fuck it. And just cancel battle Royale and just focus on just survive. Because, because even though, even though the time for a zombie survival game has passed, I feel like they already have enough of a game there that they could keep the, the, the existing player base sated, I guess, um, and make that, you know, I, I feel like there's still a chance. Whereas I feel with Battle Royale, there's no chance. I just don't feel like there's any chance right now. It's not going to happen. Um, so, yeah. So, unfortunately, they are, uh, uh, a bunch of people got laid off. We don't know the numbers yet. We do have no idea. So we'll have to just wait and see what the numbers are. But hopefully it's low because they just laid off 70 people last week or last month. Well, hold on a second. Did they lay off 70 people? What did Daybreak lay off 70 people? I actually don't know. Hold on. Hold on. Daybreak laid off 70 people. All right. So Daybreak laid off 70 people. And then Nanji laid off a bunch of people. So there's not a lot of people working there right now at either one of these places. <laughs> so hopefully there's enough to make some competent decisions about the games that they currently have in their stead and they could go through and, uh, and make them, you know, the best they could possibly be, I guess. And just ditch the Battle Royale. Just be done with it. Um, World War Z game in two weeks? Fuck. <sighs> Last thing. Last thing. No, I don't have, I don't have a Soldier Boy update. I know. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. No Soldier Boy update today, but I do have, uh, something, some electronics shit that we should talk about. Let me see. Where should I go? Let's go to, uh, uh I actually didn't have a link to, to where to go for this. So we'll just go to the official site and here it is. The Sega Genesis 
Mini. Oh, I can push the button. Fine. All right. Oh, it's muted. There you go. That's all you get. All right. So, uh, the Sega Genesis Mini is coming. I'm a little excited about this because the Sega Genesis is the one. That's the one platform, one console that I did not own, nor did any friends close to me have. I had a. Uh, I actually. It's funny because I have. I actually have Toe Jam and Earl and a, a Genesis over in the corner over there right now. Uh, it doesn't work. But <laughs> it's it's over there, so I own it now because like I found that at a garage sale. I was like, oh shit, I've never actually had a chance to really play this. I played it one summer uh, in Mission Viejo at my grandma's grandma and grandpa's house. Uh, this kid down the street, I don't remember his name, but uh, doesn't matter what his name is. He had a Genesis, so we'll just call him the Genesis kid. So the Genesis kid, I used to go over there every single day and play so many games. Uh, yeah, Golden Axe. I played. Uh, I didn't really play Sonic too much. But I did play Altered Beast a lot. I play Altered Beast so much that if somebody just says Altered, like Altered Carbon, I, I would immediately hear the Altered Beast song and hear that voice that comes on when like he said, when he, like you change it's all like, I don't know what he says, but the music starts playing and the crazy bosses and shit and like the, oh man, it's fucking great, man. It's not so bad. It was awesome. It's probably bad now, but it was awesome. It was so good. Golden Axe also was super good. Um, but of those games, what game is going to be on it? Well, we know 10 of 40 or 10 of 40. Uh, Echo the Dolphin, Castlevania Bloodlines, Space Harrier 2, Shining Force, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. I have no idea what the fuck that is. I know Dr. Robotnik is, but that's about it. Uh, Toe Jam and Earl, uh, Comic Zone, Sonic the Hedgehog, Altered Beast, and Gunstar Heroes. So. Yeah, of that group, I agree, Freycourt. There's a bunch here. It's kind of like, all right. Mm. But there are a few that eh, maybe I'll pick it up. But we still have 30 more. Uh, 30 more that are going to be announced. Shinobi. Uh, how about Strider? Did anybody play Strider? Strider was another one of my favorite games uh, to play on Genesis. I, I want to say the, the Super Nintendo version was shit compared to it, right? Was it Super Nintendo? I can't. I think it's what it was. I can't remember. But Strider was, uh, yeah, it was just arcade port, which I was totally fine with that. Um, so yes, September 19th, the day before my birthday, uh, the high definition graphics, the Sega Genesis is getting a classic version, two controllers. It comes with two, by the way, two controllers. Um, so that's great. If you have a friend or something, uh, what is a soldier Genesis coming out? That actually just flows right off. This is just soldier Genesis. That just flows right off. So anyways, you can pick this up September 19th. I believe you can pre-order now, but I would recommend waiting. I would recommend waiting. Until you get uh, uh, you get list the rest of the list of games, um, unless you're gonna just flash it and put your own shit on there, which I have a classic that has some things on it that I 100% own the physical copy of. I just wanted a digital version. Uh, so yeah, just wait for the rest of the list. Oh yeah, that's right. You can always cancel your pre-order. Saren is correct. You can always cancel your pre-order. There you go. So. I guess the last thing is Snapchat announced its own gaming platform called Snap Games. It's launching with six games. You could play the games in in the actual app itself while simultaneously also uh, videoing uh, or chatting with a friend or something like that through Snapchat. Does anybody care? No, not really. Okay, good. That's it for news. Thank you so much. Thank you, chat. That was a good one. Oh, man. Woo, we've been newsing since the second we actually turned on the stream today. We've only got the past hour and such just to actually uh, uh, do it. Yeah, Snapchat lines. No exclusives that I know of, though. The dick pic game. That's all I was, was, was thinking, too. It's just like, you play games while simultaneously sending dick pics to your friends and all that. Shake Zoo, thank you so much. Hey, we're not done yet. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Thank you so much, chat, for being here and, of course, just supporting the show. I know you guys love it, and I know you can love you guys being here. Um... And uh, uh, that's it. So you can find me, aka Mike B, aka Mike B, on pretty much everything. Aka Mike B photo on other things. Chat likes poops, steamy poops, steamy steamy poops. Why are we end a show like that? That's weird. I had worked with him before, and he had been fine before when we worked together. So maybe if he had said like, "Do you mind if I like give you a good slap on the ass to have like the handprint on your butt for this photo?" I probably would have said yes.